Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group overview for the 2nd Armoured French Division. I'm not going to try and pronounce the actual name of the division because unfortunately I would probably butcher it and uh, would not leave the frogs very happy. So let's just talk a little bit about how the deck works. It's a very aggressive phase A deck with 100 requisition points available in Phase A. Now this deck has come under some balancing recently and I expect that to continue in the future so please take what I say with a grain of salt. If things change then you know you're just going to have to make your own choices on how that affects the deck and in the future. However right now it's a very Phase A focused deck with a lot of aggressive units and therefore a lot of my choices will be based around that. So let's jump straight into the recon. We're going to start off by looking at the Spy. Now these are a 25 point recon squad. They do not have a machine gun which is kind of lets them well kind of lets them down for a four man recon squad. However, in close combat they can hold their own reasonably well if they are in cover. Otherwise, they're just there to be the hidden recon, and for 25 points, you can't really go wrong. Moving on, I have a unit of the Gruppe Spahi. These guys are the two-man infantry squads, again, there to remain hidden. But they also come in the M20 command car. Now, well, this isn't a command vehicle, but um, it is an armoured car with a 50 caliber machine gun on it. And that's what makes it very useful. So the 50 caliber machine gun, if it's buffed, this will become a two star transport. And that makes the 50 caliber machine gun on it very effective. I haven't actually brought in too many of these yet because I tend to use the M8 Greyhounds. But these are very good backup for if you start to lose a few of those Greyhounds later on. So just keep the infantry hidden, use the armoured car to support your infantry and other pushes elsewhere. So the other things that come under recon in phase A on this deck are the M8 Greyhounds and arguably one of the best recon units in the game currently. You can bring in cards of two of them with one star veterancy and you can also bring in two cards of the two star veterancy. You only get one on each of those cards, so use them sparingly. If you bring them up with a command car or a command tank, then you can obviously make them three stars and then they become very, very powerful. So the main gun has one HE power, which is not fantastic, but this 50 cal and the 30 cal machine gun certainly make up for that. And they can pin down and take out enemy AT guns very quickly because they do have their own high optics in order to spot them in the first place. So as long as you are within the 800 meter range to use your 50 cal alongside your main gun, you can pin them down quite quickly. And that's something that this unit is great for. Just running down enemy positions, it allows you to spot the targets that you want to fire at. And if you are supported by Stuarts, then those things can also take the shots too. And that's what makes this such a good combination. So definitely bring in the two star M8 Greyhounds. Buffing them to three stars really makes them very effective. I don't have any phase B recon in this deck. I use all of the M8 Greyhounds in phase A. Some of the Spahi, maybe the group of Spahi in the phase A as well. So that's why I've got them all. Now in phase B, you can get Spahi in the scout car. Again, another useful 50 cal machine gun there but not really something that I tend to bring in. You can also go for less of them for a two star unit and this gives you a two star scout car M3 as well potentially being buffed up to a three star 50 cal vehicle which is very very strong again so definitely something to consider if you can find space on your recon tab. Now finally there is the M3 A3 Spy recon tank I mean, for Phase B, this just isn't a good tank. 
It would be a great vehicle if you could maybe get one of these in phase A. I would definitely consider doing so because having a high optics on a Stuart so that it can look after itself is just fantastic. However, because they come in phase B, I just don't value them in my deck. I'd rather rely on the tanks in phase B in order to uh, make some ground. And by tanks, I mean the tanks in the tank tab. So let's jump over to infantry now and have a look at my infantry choices. Now this is something that varies quite a lot from different people's decks. People struggle to run with availability in this deck. Like the availability of infantry in phase A for the French is actually very low. And therefore you have to be very careful about how you use them and basically make value them throughout the game. You don't want to lose them easily. I find the Voltigers completely useless, never bring them in. These guys don't even have a machine gun. Their M1 Garand and HE value of the squad in general is terrible. You're forced to bring them in a 30 cal half track as well. So just don't go there. The Pioneers, possible choice if you like your house to house napalm fighting and running through forests with a napalm, firing flames everywhere. Sounds fun, but uh, less practical in uh, the game. <laughs> then what I use is the two uh, Nerva squads, which are the two star Spanish squads with the 50 cal half tracks. These guys are currently two star veteran C. They do have a machine gun, the MG34, and this 30 cal half track makes them a very, very good squad. Buff them up to three stars alongside a CDP Voltiger squad, and you are in for a winner. So the main key for the infantry with the French is to use the Nerva alongside the CDP Voltigers to get a very good strong point in towns using minimal amount of infantry. And that's what they're great for. Now in order to make up for your numbers, I would suggest bringing in one card of the uh, 30 cal machine guns and one card of the 50 caliber machine guns that you can get in phase A. You can only get one card of them, but these two 50 caliber machine guns can be very useful for pinning down enemy light armor. So anything with like two armor or less can be pinned down by a 50 caliber machine gun. And when these guys are fortified in a town or just in general a building or even, you know, just in an edge of a forest, they can be extremely effective, especially if uh, under the command radius with the extra veterancy. So that's what these guys are very useful. The 30 cal is just fantastic for pinning down infantry and filling up buildings in towns. So if you find you're running out of infantry for the front line, just pop out machine guns everywhere onto strong points. You know, put them into the farmhouse buildings, put them into the farm, ta like the little tower things that you can find across the map, you know, uh, just, you know, little forest patches. Spread these machine guns around to carry your front line whilst using the Nerva with the half tracks to hit the hard points. Just make sure that you don't lose them easily to enemy bombers, enemy like uh, like the rocket planes, for example, the ME 109s. Um, just try and keep them safe as best you can because you won't have a lot of them and people can definitely exploit that. Now moving into phase B, I take one card of the Sappers and one card of the Voltigers. Now the Sappers are great because they have a Bazooka and a 22 HE power TNT satchel charge which is fantastic for when you're up and up close and personal with the enemy infantry you can just blow up the enemy squads and uh, obviously the Bazooka very useful for taking out enemy vehicles it does have 200 meter range as well so make good use of that great for towns great for uh, jumping through hedgerows and sniping enemy units. But definitely have these teamed up with the Voltigers because the Voltigers come with two 30 caliber machine guns which uh, have 8 HE power. So these guys put down a lot of fire and come with 50 caliber um, half tracks as opposed to the 30 caliber half tracks that come with the Sappers. So I like to have one unit of Sappers, one unit of Voltigers. I only have one unit of a command infantry in this deck. Don't bring in a second one in phase B because you need the extra availability when you get to phase B. 
Now I used to have one card of machine guns in phase A and a third card of either sappers or altigers in phase B. However, I found that I was running out of infantry in phase A sometimes, so I just basically filled in with more machine guns, which tends to work out for me. So that's my choice. I know that some of you guys like your other choices, but in my opinion, that's probably the best setup for infantry at the moment. Moving on to tanks, this is where I find my command units. So I have the card of command M3A1s, and I have those alongside a card of M5A1s, um, or the M3A3, sorry, and the M5A1s. They come together because the M5A1s have 8 AP and 6 armor, but they don't have veterancy. The M3A1 or the M3A3s have 7 AP power and 5 armor, and uh, are veteran. They have the one star veterancy, but they're also command. So what I do is I couple maybe one M3A1 with two M5A1s, and that little combination is very potent. You can bring in one of these tanks every tick with your 100 uh, requisition points every minute. And then eventually you're going to get like a fourth one. And that's just such a good combination. Make sure you keep your M3A3 at the back. Use the M5A1s moving forwards with the 6 front armour. And then you can keep your command tanks alive and they're very useful later in the game for buffing up your other tanks and units. That's what I tend to use them for. Moving into phase B, I currently use the command M4A2 Sherman. 11 AP, 10 armour. And I bring those in alongside the normal M4A2 Shermans, which are 2 star. Now these go up to 3 star with the command from the command M4A1 or M4A2 sorry. So these guys can be extremely good especially as infantry fire support. So when your infantry is in trouble in the mid game bring one of these along alongside an M4A2 command or even one of your older Stuart command units. Because a 3 star Sherman with a 50 cal and two 30 cals plus its main gun is going to tear infantry to pieces, trust me. Now in phase B I also bring in one of the one star veterancy 76mm M4A3 Shermans. These are just fantastic for popping the mid game armour that comes out of the German side. And then moving into phase C I have both cards of the two star M4A3s of the 76mm again. Because these at 3 star can definitely go to work on enemy light armour and uh, enemy medium armour as well. However, with this deck in general, you will struggle with dealing with uh, late armour of the Germans. For example, Tigers, Panthers, Gunnix Tigers. You're not going to have much of a chance unless you get a good flank on. However, these just support you moving on to AC. Generally, if you haven't won by phase C, you're going to be in a little bit of a sticky situation with this deck anyway. Now, you could definitely, you know, choose to go for the grind and throw in multiple M4A3s with the 75 mils. You can get six of these on one card. But they're just not good for that phase. And that's why I just don't choose them to, to bring them in, even though you get tons of availability. For me, having tanks that actually do something is way more valuable and that's why I choose the tanks that I have in my deck. So moving on to support this is where I would probably maybe possibly change out my own units. This is a very odd tab for me it's quite hard for me to get my head around I haven't really worked out what's best. Currently I bring in the M8 Greyhounds the 65 point versions these are great extra fire support for phase A if you don't necessarily want to splash the cash for a Stuart, although a Stuart is generally worth it. These guys for 75 points, very mobile, um, can help you out with your infantry fire support. So definitely something to consider and worth bringing in for 65 points in my opinion. I definitely bring in uh, these GMCs, the supply trucks, always useful. 
always bring them in at phase eight because some of your infantry might run out of ammunition. Now the the main thing that I'm kind of on the fence about is both bringing in the M8 Scots and also these command cars. So the command cars are extremely useful because at the moment the current strategy with the French that I see quite a lot uh, quite a lot is bringing in both of the M8 Greyhounds at the start of the game alongside one of the command cars and the reason that's the combination is because the command car is the only vehicle that can really keep up with the Greyhounds in the early game and that's why they're using combination because you want three star M8s of course. So having these on your deck you know if you're going to go for that kind of strategy definitely worth something thinking of, well something worth thinking about however what I like to do instead is go for a command m3a3 with the two greyhounds that's my preferred strategy and uh, what I do to compensate for command vehicles is in phase b actually bring in the am m20 commands and then use these as my extra command units as the game goes on so I find that in phase a my command stewards and also the command infantry makes up for my command and in phase B I have the M4A2s and the M20 command vehicles to sort me out then. So the main thing that I would possibly swap out an M8 for is the M4A3 Sherman with the 15 HE power. Now these things are fantastic because they have 1200 meter range. And in phase B, it can be good enough to take out quite a lot of AT guns. However, sometimes I just find that these guys aren't useful and I just don't bring them in because I feel like they're going to get killed too easy. Or they're just not going to shape up to the enemy armor that I'm up against or whatever else. So I don't tend to find myself bringing these in too often. However, like an M8 in phase A could be very useful. So I'm actually quite torn about bringing in either an M4A3 or M8s. So that's the choice that you guys can make. Other than that, I don't find two man flame units useful. I just don't. Unless they made them have a little bit longer range than six man squads. I just yeah, I just don't see the use for them. They just get killed way too easy. 50 cow jeeps, not great either. Have no armor. If they get caught out and under fire, they're gonna die. So just be aware of that. Um, but that's about it if you want more. Supply in phase B, bring in more GMCs if you're playing a he RT heavy deck for whatever reason, you can possibly try to, to do that. Either way, that's my choices for the support tab. I know this one changes quite a lot depending on who's playing the deck, but it's really up to you guys. Moving on to the anti-tank tab. Now this is another interesting one. Do you bring in loads of Wolverines or do you mix it up a little? For me, Wolverines all the way. So I don't even bring in bazooka squads. I find that bazookas are made up for with the infantry. So you can bring in sapiers and you can also bring in the CDP Vortigers. These guys are your bazookas in phase A. So I don't find you need extra bazookas in phase A. Now there is a thing with the Germans where they some of their infantry has Panzerfaust and then their AT infantry has Panzerschrecks. In that case, it's worth bringing in Panzerschrecks because... Panzerschrecks have a hundred extra meter range, whereas the bazookas here are not longer range than the bazookas on your normal infantry. So that's why I wouldn't recommend bringing them in. As for AT guns, definitely bring in AT guns in phase A. You want three of the uh, M1 gun 57 mils, and I bring them in in jeeps. I don't find I need extra half tracks, although extra half tracks can be useful, but it just makes them cost more to bring in at the start of the game, and I'd rather have three AT guns than an extra half track. Honestly, that's just the way that I play the early game. Then, if I need something a bit heavier, then I bring in the M10. And uh, you can possibly bring this in at the start of the game if you want to, but only if you're counting on your opponent possibly bringing in the Firefly. You can then use this to try and take out the Firefly. However, the Firefly does have 16 AP, which should technically one-shot your M10. So be wary of that, <laughs> as you do not want that to happen. However, I did see 
an M10 actually bounce a shot from a Firefly the other day, which is about a 10% chance. <laughs> but there you go. It happens. And the game can sometimes be based around luck. But in this case, I still think it's worth bringing in the Wolverine in Phase A. Some people like to bring in two of them. Like, you could bring in two in Phase A instead of bringing in the Phase C card that I have. But in my case, I find that I end up spending points on so much other stuff in Phase A that I don't have the time or the requisition points to bring out another M10 in Phase A. Now, Fusilier Marines. These are interesting. They're four-man squads. They come with a WC-52, which is a 50 caliber Jeep. I'm not convinced about these guys yet. They're basically slightly upgraded bazooka squad. I give you a look at the bazooka squad. Basically, you get two extra men with carbines. And those carbines are two HE. Like you may as well just have a bazooka squad, right? Because the bazooka squads, at least they have very good stealth. Whereas the Fusil Fusilier Marines, they only have good stealth. In my opinion, pretty useless unit. Just stick to AT guns and M10s. It does me fine most of the time. If you need more Zookas in Phase B, rely on Sappers. You have plenty of those to work with. Now, in Phase C, I bring in one of the cards of the six M10s. And in Phase B, I've got the four card. That's what I choose to use because... You don't really get upgraded AT guns in this deck, you just get more of them. And the M10s are better than the AT guns, for sure. And uh, these M10s also have 50 cows, which can make them good for supporting infantry, which is quite interesting. So there you go. I just love the M10s on the anti-tank. Completely up to you though, if you want to try out the Fusion Low Marines, be my guest. If you want to try out having more AT guns, be my guest. In my opinion, M10s all the way. Moving on to anti-air. Now this anti-air tab is very interesting, probably very strong actually, because I have three cards of anti-air and I've got five Bofors in phase A and B. Like that is a lot of Bofors. So I have the Bofors on the truck in phase A, got Bofors on the truck in phase B, and I've got uh, the M15s in phase C which have the M1A 237mm auto cannons on them. And, well, if you bring in all of this AA, you're certainly going to be able to control the skies, I tell you that much. Both of definitely do the job. 1000 meter range, 10 HE power, and uh, the HE power of the 37mm also does the job very nicely as well. You can see it matches up to the rate of fire of both fours. One less HE power, but also comes with two 50 cows, which work at 800 meter range, to stun things very, very quickly. These these armored cars do a great amount of damage. Also, the great thing about these GMC Bofors is they have one star veterancy already and experience. That will take change to two, and you can use these as ground support as well. So, something to consider. But two of these in phase A can definitely deny enemy air in phase A if you're struggling. However, you shouldn't be because if you jump to the air tab quick, you do have Spitfires in Phase A. So, yeah. I just find that both as on trucks are just generally more useful because they are mobile. And once they've fired, you just uh, attack move them to another location and uh, they should generally be safe from airstrikes. Both as on the ground with the eight men available are good for if you're going to be static with your both as and you want more of them. But uh, the difference between having three on trucks and three on the ground, well, to me, it's worth having the trucks because they're more mobile and a lot more versatile. Completely up to you, though. If you like having immobile AA and you rely on that quite heavily, then, yeah, feel free. So that's pretty much it. I find these 800mm uh, M16s not to be particularly great. So I don't rely on these too much. Much prefer the extra range from the Bofors and the uh, M1A2 37mm. So that's why I don't choose to bring in the M16 AA carriers. So let's move on to artillery. This is uh, <laughs> the arty tab of this deck, which is why I was laughing about it earlier. 
pretty much nothing here. You definitely want mortars in phase A. They help you smoke. They help you, uh, you know, blow up enemy infantry and pin down enemy units. So mortars, definitely worth having. 60mm mortars are not great because they only have 900m range. The extra range on the 81mm mortars means that I take a card of those instead. I also have the uh, OP M4A2 Forward Observer Sherman. Only has its machine guns available. Three machine guns on this tank is actually not too bad. Definitely a great fire support vehicle. Comes with the 155mm battery, 16HE 52m uh, AOE. Not convinced about this, honestly. Really being tempted to change this out for the M7s. These uh, priests with the 15HE power. Now these guys have 2400 meter range. Um, can be quite useful as indirect artillery fire. So definitely been thinking about swapping these out for the M4A2 and honestly I might do that in my own time. I need to basically try out the uh, M4A2 but I don't think the off-map artillery is really worth the tank either. So yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about that. Now this half track, in my opinion, not really worth it. It's the same HE power as the 81mm from Phase A, plus 30 more points and comes with a half track and the uh, 50 cal. I mean, if you're finding you're running out of mortars, possibly bring in some more, but in my opinion, if you're going to go big, you may as well go this big. And get the M and get the M7 priest. Just so much more versatile than a mortar in phase B. So that's pretty much artillery. Not too much to talk about. Wouldn't rely on it too much. Just use it for smoke and support. Moving into the air tab, however, this is where things get fun. So in phase A, the French have access to up to four Spitfires. Now this is something you can definitely take advantage of. If you want control of the sky in Phase A as the French, swap out my Phase C Spitfires for more Phase A Spitfires. Definitely works. Phase A Spitfires, these guys are not only sexy, but extremely potent. These guys are going to absolutely rip to shreds enemy fighters out of the sky. And they have very good agility, you know, there's not too much you can do. You can just... Like, if if an enemy player has four aircraft in the in the sky in Phase A, literally nothing you can do. And you can be that guy. So, up to you. I actually prefer not to and just go for the Phase C. Bringing in and spending on four Spitfires in Phase A is actually quite a large investment. So I wouldn't recommend it. I wait till phase C to bring in more Spitfires when I need the air superiority for my DB-73s. Now there are a couple of interesting things. Uh, don't bring in recon aircraft, they're useless. Um, the DB-7Bs however, these guys are up to you. They bring in six smoke bombs. I find it's kind of a use, useless slot on the deck because I use mortars to, use, to bring in smoke. Um, however, they can provide very interesting strategic opportunities because they create a massive wall of smoke exactly where you want it. The only issue is, if a fighter comes in in phase A and shoots this down, you lose 120 points and you've done absolutely nothing to the enemy. You just dropped a little bit of smoke on them, made them cough a little. And uh, to me, doesn't particularly seem worth it. Two Spitfires, however, strafing things on the ground definitely worth it and then you can just cover off things with smoke using your mortars so that's what I do anyway um, moving on to phase B I bring in more Spitfires more Spitfire Mark 9s however these are the chaps with two uh, 230 kilogram bombs strapped underneath and uh, they have 15 HE power which makes them very very useful for taking out enemy AT positions and enemy infantry in the mid game so definitely a unit I would suggest to bringing in and worthy of a slot in my opinion you can also get the lightnings the p38 lightnings with the rocket pods in phase B however 
rocket pods I find on these lightnings aren't very effective and uh, I don't need more fighters because the Spitfires will look after themselves. Sorry about my voice there. Now moving into Phase C, I bring in the Spitfire Mark 9s with the 1 star veterancy. And these are to cover off my Phase C options. So I bring in the DB-73 with the four 230kg 15HE bombs. And these guys can pretty much shrug off enemy anti-air and hit their target, then escape. And they do have very good resilience, so it takes a lot to shoot one of these down. And the only thing that really threaten these guys is enemy fighters, which is the reason why I have three Spitfires with the extra veterancy in Phase C. So that's pretty much my Phase C sorted there. You definitely need the extra fire support in Phase C, and that comes in in the form of this bomber. Because if you get to phase C and you're not super far ahead, you need something to hold the line and the bomber will definitely help you do that. You can possibly again switch out Spitfires, you get three Spitfires there, you can get three Spitfires in phase B without the veteran C, your choice. If you find you're running out of Spitfires, then be my guest and change that. Now the other thing that uh, is an option is to bring in a bomber in phase B like instead of bringing in two in phase C you could go for the combination in phase B instead for example um, swapping out the Spitfires and the DB73 for example for the Spitfires and Mark B in phase B alongside the DB73s in phase B however the reason I don't do this is because I feel like you don't have enough points to spend on aircraft in phase B. So you get 110, which is reasonable. Not the best out of all the divisions for phase B, but it's okay. And I just find that I'm using that at that point on M10s, I'm using it on my anti-air, and I'm using it on my M4A3s. And alongside all of that, you don't have enough points to spend on the extra and or on the extra air force. So, yeah, there you go. The other choice for bomber is the P-38 Lightning with the two 25 HE power bombs. However, I'm very much a fan of bombers that can shrug off AA. The P-38 Lightning definitely cannot due to its bad resilience. But please be aware of that. It also has bad agility compared to the other P-38s which have medium agility because it carries bombs. So. It's not going to be uh, shrugging off uh, enemy fighters. Either way, that's pretty much my deck. Let's uh, save that and we'll jump back to have a good look at how these units complement each other. So in Phase A, it's all about the uh, Greyhounds and Command units. My personal favourite is using the M8 Greyhounds alongside the M3A3 Command Stuart. You do have to kind of wait for your Stuart to catch up once you're rolling across fields generally not too much of an issue then what you want to do is reinforce that with more m5a1 so as you continue through the a phase you can also possibly choose to bring up some m8s if you want quantity over quality as for your infantry you want to be supporting your infantry with smoke from your mortars definitely want at least one mortar at the start of the game to smoke off your nerve and the Voltigers to get them into the positions that you want them to be in. Make sure that you keep the command by the Nerva, so they're three stars and those 50 cal half tracks are two, and you will rip to shreds the enemy infantry. Get the 50 cals into positions to take down enemy light armor and infantry, pin them down very quickly. And then if you're struggling with enemy heavy armor, bring in an M10. Always bring in your AT guns at the start because uh, they will do you wonders. Maybe one or two actually, not maybe all of them, because you are going to be spending a lot of points on your recon. And that's pretty much it for phase A. Just keep bringing in the Stuarts, keep bringing in all of your your infantry, bring in plenty of recon, and uh, you have loads of points in phase A to spend. As you move into phase B, back up any infantry you've lost with extra infantry. Back up your tanks with... First of all the M4A3 76mm and then extra command tanks if you need them. 
bring an M20 command to support your infantry if you've run out of command infantry. And you can also use the M20 commands to complement your AA, these Bofors, in order to create a good AA net in phase B. Furthermore, if you need a bit more oomph, I tend to use the off-map artillery, although I haven't been using it too much recently. And you can also start to bring in the Spitfires to bomb off those pesky AT guns. You can also try and engage AT guns with the M4A3 at range. This I would mainly recommend to be using for um, enemy infantry. So that's pretty much it. If you haven't really made much of a lead by phase B, settle in because you're in for a rough ride. And that's pretty much all I can say. Every deck is going to have a lot more requisition points than you in phase C. So you're going to be in for a rough ride. You don't have much really to deal with enemy German heavy armor. So yeah, just hold them off your best you can. Use your DB73 Spitfire combo to bomb out the enemy uh, tanks and stun them, stop them heading towards your lines. And just hold as long as you can until you get that victory. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys have found this useful. Let me know what you think about the French deck. Um, let me know uh, what your decks look like and your opinions on what you like to bring in. Really love reading your comments. So definitely keep them coming. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.